Hello, God bless you. My name is Stephen Trainer. I'm the pastor of Graffiti Fellowship in Brooklyn, New York. And today I'm really excited to um, send you this to, to, to make this very special video. This is something that we call the story of God. And this is where we tell the entire story of the Bible uh, in, in, a, in a very broad sense from start to finish in about eight or nine minutes. Now, this is not designed to keep you from reading the Bible. It's really designed to encourage you to read the Bible, to read God's story. Uh, but it is, it's a, it's a great way, I think, to give you a peek at all that's here and to also um, generate some excitement and, 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 and really a longing to go deeper into the story of God. This is also a great tool to share with uh, friends or family members or anyone you may know who uh, haven't read any of the Bible yet, who are unfamiliar with God's story, but uh, who may be curious or, or, or have questions. We're going to use to accomplish this um, a tool. It's not original to us. It's, it's a part of a, a series of resources called The Story Formed Way, and it's put up by a ministry called Saturate. And so we're really thankful um, for their development of this tool. So without further ado, uh, let's tell the story of God. Now, this story is a story about God. And God is, uh, God's a being who has always existed. He's the creator of everything. And in this story, God alone, He's the only one who always does what is good and what is right and what is perfect. And the Bible calls this holy. So God is holy. Now, God created everything, and while He created the foundations of the earth, His angels, who were the first beings that He created, they looked on and watched. They sang and worshipped Him as He created, but some of these angels rebelled against God and against His holy ways. The Bible teaches that all rebellion against God is called sin. Now, because of God's holiness, He can never allow sin to remain in His presence. So He sent these rebellious angels, who are now called demons, into darkness on the earth that He created. Then God decided to create another being who would be called humans. Now, these beings were created in His own image, and God said, Let us create mankind in our image to be like us. He then prepared the earth as a place for humans to live. He filled the earth with plants and animals of all kinds. And God, as He created these first humans who were named Adam and Eve, He breathed into them His own breath, giving them life. Now God placed them in a beautiful garden and told them to care for all that He had made. He trusted them to rule over the earth, and He told them to be fruitful and to multiply. Now, at this time, every day, God would spend time with the humans. He would walk with them in the cool of the day. He taught them to live life in the best possible way, a life that was close to God, a life that was under His protection, a life that was full, a life that was complete, and a life that was eternal. God looked over all He had created, and He saw that it was very good. Now, unfortunately, Adam and Eve eventually chose to rebel against God and against His authority. They, they chose to live life in their own ways instead of His. And because God cannot allow evil to remain in His presence, just like those rebellious angels, Adam and Eve were sent out of the garden away from God. They were now separated from God no longer following His ways. And because of this, they were now subject to sickness and pain and death. And God told them, the way you've chosen to live will bring you great struggle and hardship and pain. And then you'll return to the ground from which you came. And not only were these humans now separated from God because of their sin, but they would now suffer death because they were separated from the giver of life. Now, after leaving the garden, the number of humans on the earth grew rapidly, and sin spread from Adam and Eve to their sons, and then continued to spread from generation to generation. Even though the humans were created in God's image, everybody, because of this sin, 
chose to disobey God. They all constantly acted out in selfishness and violence against each other. This went on for thousands of years. Then God established a special promise, which is called a covenant with a man named Abraham. Now, a covenant represents the deepest of all agreements. God told Abraham, I'll make you the father of a great nation. You'll be famous throughout all history. I'll bless those who bless you, and I'll curse those who curse you. The entire earth will be blessed through your descendants. And remember, I'll always be your God, and your descendants will always be my people. Now, Abraham's family, called the Israelites, were to be a new kind of people who would show the world what it looked like to once again live in God's ways. God gave them a vast amount of land where they lived as they grew into a large nation of people. But as time went by, even these Israelites began doing what was right in their own eyes. They rebelled against God and against His commands. They stopped trusting in God and they began to worship idols and people and things. They, they worshiped wealth and power over God. In their rebellion, the Israelites faced many struggles and they ended up a defeated nation of slaves. But God continued to love these people, and He promised that one day, one of their own descendants would come and rescue and restore humanity, and in fact, all of creation, back to the way God had originally created it. And then there was 400 years of silence. God said nothing, and the world was shrouded in the darkness of sin and rebellion. And for those 400 years, the people clung to the covenant, the promise that one was coming. A Messiah, a Savior, a King of Heaven who would once more be King of Earth and be found here on Earth with His people. Now these Israelites, also called Jews, had been under the control of other nations for hundreds of years. Now they're being ruled by Rome, the most powerful empire the world had ever known. And finally, God sent an angel to a young woman named Mary from a town called Nazareth. The angel appeared to her and said, You'll become pregnant. You're going to have a son. And you are to give him the name Jesus. He'll become a king whose kingdom will never end. And this will happen supernaturally by God's own spirit so that this baby will be called God's own son. God revealed to Mary and her soon-to-be husband Joseph that this baby would be the long-awaited Messiah King, the one God promised to send to rescue His people. And then, exactly as God had said, the next year, Mary gave birth to a son. They gave him that name Jesus, a name which means the God who saves. The Bible says Jesus, uh, Jesus grew up in both height and wisdom like any other boy. He was loved by God. He was loved by everyone who knew Him. He lived a remarkable life, always choosing to live in God's ways, always choosing to do what was good and right and perfect. As a man, Jesus called people to follow Him, and He invited them to be a part of what He called the kingdom of God. He called people to once again live under God's rule and reign. God blesses those who realize their need for Him. The humble, the poor, the gentle, the merciful. The kingdom of God belongs to people such as these. God blesses the pure in heart and those who hunger and thirst to be with Him. He taught people that the kingdom of God is within our hearts. He said God showed His great love for people by sending His one and only Son to the world. Anyone who believes in Jesus, who lives in His ways, will find life that is complete and eternal. Jesus said this about Himself. He says, God sent me here to save people, not to judge them. Those who want to live in sin and darkness, they'll reject me, and they'll bring God's judgment on themselves. But those who want to live in God's ways will trust me, and they'll live forever. As God promised, He sent Jesus to rescue humanity from their sin and from the penalty of death. God accepted Jesus' perfect life in place of our own. Now, Jesus was brutally beaten. He died painfully on a wooden cross, taking the punishment that all of rebellious humanity deserved. 
Three days later, Jesus conquered death when God raised him back to life. He was seen by over 500 eyewitnesses. Soon afterward, Jesus went to be with his Father in heaven, and he promised that he would send his own spirit to dwell with those who followed him and who trusted him. The Spirit would remind them of all that Jesus taught, and He would change their hearts to be more like Him. And this Holy Spirit would give them the power to walk in the ways of God, just as Jesus had. Jesus also sent His followers out to tell others about Him, about His life, about His sacrifice for their sins, and and, and to lead them to trust in Jesus themselves so that they could also walk in His ways. This was the beginning of what the Bible calls the church. It's a community of people from all over the world that once again enjoy a life that is full and complete, living in the ways of God. Now, the story continues today. It, it continues with us. The Bible also tells us the end of the story. See, Jesus promises to come back and destroy all evil and rebellion. There will be no more sickness or pain or death. God's kingdom will come in fullness. And everyone and everything will live under His perfect rule. Until then, we get to live in His ways. And we get to be used by Him to give people a foretaste of what life is like in the kingdom of God.